I'm out here, I think it's a Columbia, Alabama address, out here really in the middle of nowhere. If you'll remember my friend Chuck, I did a couple of videos with him in them uh, last year or two. Uh, he got started with bees a year ago, back in 2020. Had a really good year, was able to harvest some honey. Still has some bees out here. It's really a, a good little spot for bees. A lot of stuff has grown around here and he's had some good success with these bees. But this year has had a very difficult time with some things and so he has not been able to harvest his honey. It's October 23rd, it's a little bit late in the year. I came out last week to kind of just check in on him, see how things were going. And I realized he had not had a chance to harvest his honey. So I offered just to take care of it for him. It's gonna be kind of fun today because it's, it's gonna be old school for me. It's gonna be kind of like going back in time a little bit. We're gonna pull the honey out here and then I'm gonna take it back to my garage and pull out the old three frame extractor and just do it the old fashioned way. When I got out here, I, I kind of looked at the hives and I think we're gonna have a maximum of maybe five boxes of honey. Before we move on though, I'd appreciate it if you go down, hit that like button so we can push this video out to more people. All right, let's get started. Uh, first of all, of course, we got our smoker. Uh, second of all, I'm going to use fume boards. I got this fume board here. We're going to use this. It's warm enough to use it. It's just probably 70s, 80s, something like that out here. And I use Honey Be Gone as a repellent to put on the fume board. If you go back and watch my most recent uh, honey harvest video, I did use the fume boards uh, back in the summer when we did our huge uh, harvest and it worked really well. Uh, of course, the hive tool. I got this bucket here just to scrape any burr comb into if we have some extra. And then I bring some lids right here uh, to set the honey on. As I bring it off the hives, I'll set it down on this lid right here, and then I'll put another lid on top to keep the bees from robbing. Okay, first step is gonna be to spray this fume board with this honey be gone. I don't have a lot left. I hope it's enough. So I just wanna spray it. You know, get quite a bit on there so it'll drive the bees down quickly out of the supers. I actually kind of tipped the lid up a little bit earlier and the hive is packed with bees. He uses inner covers. And when you got bees on top of the inner cover, it's a little beetle right there. It's a good indication, in my opinion, you got a good strong hive. So now let's remove the inner cover and see what it looks like. I think it's been quite a while since this has happened here. And they got it glued down. I think they got everything attached with wax. I went ahead and just put on my bee jacket because I didn't know what the attitude of the bees was going to be. Boy, they have it glued down. You know what? Oh, goodness. This box. <laughs> This box doesn't have any frames in it. Look at this. Oh goodness. Look at that. So that's why it was hard to get this inner cover out because they detached all this comb and honey to the inner cover. It's just kind of full of nectar. So what I think I'm gonna do is just take this box off as is. I need to get the bees off of it somehow. And uh, just take it and we'll crush and strain it somehow. We'll try to get this honey out of it. I'm not sure how to do it because it's got a, quite a bit in there. I've never really done crush and strain much, but that is a box full of, oh my gosh, it's crazy. Look at that. A lot of honey in there. It's just not attached to any type of a frame. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just put the fume board on it. Let's try and run those bees out of there the best we can. I'm able to run those bees down good enough that we can kind of get this figured out here. I might just remove the, uh, the comb. I think I got a bucket of it I can put it in and just take it separate. That's probably gonna be the best option. This frame right here actually has a little brood on it. I might just lay it out here and let the bees clean it up. So it's got a nice little patch of brood there we could fasten it to a frame somehow but i'm not sure if chuck has any empty frames without foundation or not so i think i'm just going to lay this out i don't see the queen anywhere on here and just let the bees clean it up out here in the bee. i'm gonna take it off a little way so they don't start robbing here and i'm just not sure if y'all have any ideas I'm, I'm probably doing the wrong thing but i really am not equipped i didn't come equipped for this so i don't have any empty 
on frames. And Let's try and get the bees off the best I can. Oh, it's beautiful honey though. Oh man, what a mess. It's almost like doing a removal. Look at that beautiful capped honey. You can see a few drones here as well. For those who haven't worked with this type of comb before, it's really, it's pretty soft and delicate and it's hard to, you know, that's all nectar and honey right there. Yeah, these things happen. I've been known to Leave a frame out or something on a high before too, and the bees always like to fill out any empty space. And so the type of flows we had around here this year, these bees had this space and they just decided they're gonna fill it up with with a comb and then put honey in it, just like they would in the hollow of a tree or any other space that they might have. The bees are pretty much cleaned out. First of all, just have to remove the box here. It's pretty uh, well attached. I'm just going to de detach it from the sides. So I think I can just lift it off and then scrape the comb off and put it in this bucket. There we go. Isn't that crazy? Such beautiful soft comb. Look at that. Dropping the bucket right down here. Look at this honk right here. Look at that. Wow. Well, I can hear the bees buzzing down there. I think it's a nice strong colony. I'm seeing brood on the next frames down, so we may not be able to go any deeper into this box. I don't want to go all the way through the colony. Um, I'm just going to take the honey today. I'm actually quite amazed. I don't see any robin going on out here yet. So maybe there's a little bit of something still blooming around here. I see a little pollen coming in. Here's what we got. Almost a bucket full of uh, honeycomb right there that we're gonna go crush and strain. So here's the other colony. I've already put the fume board on here for a few minutes. Look at that. Perfect. So this box is going. I'm just gonna take it down and put it on the truck. Get the next one down. I got just some frames that needed to be drawn out still. After removing that honey soup, we got a deep box here. We'll just peek in here and see. Yeah, well, we got some frames of honey though. I, don't know, I might just take some of this. A little brood on it. Now here's our take. We got a, a five gallon bucket mostly full of crush and strain comb, six deep frames, and then a full super over there of regular medium frames. So we'll take it back down to the house, back to the garage at my house, and see what we end up with. I've never really done much crush and strain, but we decided to use a system with two five gallon buckets. In the top bucket, I drilled five holes. I think they're an inch and a half in diameter, but I'm not sure that really matters. And in the bottom bucket, I drilled uh, six holes and inserted three dowels. I don't know that the diameter of the dowels or the size of the dowels matter much. They just need to be uh, big enough to support the bucket on top. 
Then we put a paint strainer in the top bucket and we uh, put the comb in there that needed to be crushed and strained. It was a little harder than I thought it would be. I had to really squeeze it and squish it and press it and work on it to get the honey out of the comb. Uh, it would be good to have some kind of a press or something probably to do that. Um, but I finally got it squeezed out pretty good and we set the bucket aside and focused on those frames of honey to be extracted the traditional way. Okay, we're going back old school. This is how we've done it in the past. We have our comb capper here, fits on the top of a five gallon bucket, paint strainer in the bucket. And then we just use a serrated knife. And you just, I like to go from the bottom. It seems easier to me. You just work your knife up the frame like this. The wax drops into the bucket. along with whatever honey's in that wax and it'll strain it out through that filter. Do both sides. Like this. I do have a little pin roller if we need it, but on this frame it, it did a good job. So. Then we take and we put it in our old three frame hand crank extractor. We use this thing to harvest hundreds if not thousands of pounds of honey back before we got our, our better setup. So this is how we did it in the old days. And with this type of extractor, you have to flip the frames. You see the honey spun out of that comb there. So now we're gonna flip it over and we'll spin it the other way to get out of the other side. All right, here's the setup here with the uh, Crushing strain, it's pretty much drained out, it looks like. So I'm actually gonna take this out and put it in with the cappings. And then set this over here. Remove these dowels. I think it worked pretty well. I'm just gonna restrain this. Just putting it in here and it's bucket with the strainer with this other honey and then we'll strain it out better. And then it should be good to go. This is the honey we got out of the frames. A little bit of it's in this bucket over here with this other filter. And then this is the crushing strain honey right here. So we're gonna end up with a little bit over a five gallon bucket. And there's a little bit in there with the cappings as well that Chuck can filter out as he wants to. But we got that done, we've got probably between these two buckets, maybe a bucket and a half. And then here we've got the cappings and whatever's left of the crush and strain. It's easy removable lid here, so Chuck can go in there and figure out what he wants to do with that. We got the boxes in there with empty frames. And so I'm gonna get this back up to Chuck and he can turn back over to him and uh, hopefully help the friend out a little bit. All right, I'm out here with Chuck. Just dropped off his honey. What you think, Chuck? Give us some words of wisdom. It's been a good flow this year. The bees have been happy. Yeah, we got some pretty honey out of his. It's a stronger flavor, I think. It had a strong smell to it, but that's your favorite, isn't it? That's yeah. the kind you like the best. Yeah. I have no idea what it is. Whatever blooms around here, Chuck's had all kinds of stuff blooming, so it's been pretty cool. But anyway, it's glad to help you out, man. It was fun. Yes. We, we got it done, and uh, we ended up getting, probably going to end up with between a bucket and three quarters to two buckets of honey for him. So that may help get you a little, get your head a little bit for next year. Yeah. All right, man. Got to get get out there and get them situated and take care of it. It's just been a busy year. Yeah, it's been crazy. All right, man. Well, I'm gonna let you go. Y'all take care and be safe, and we'll see you on the next one.